Blocking, Wikipedia article audio. In the statistical theory of the design of experiments, blocking is the arranging of experimental units in groups that are similar to one another. Blocking reduces variability. Its principle lies in the fact that a variability that cannot be overcome is confounded or aliased with the interaction to eliminate its influence on the end product. High-order interactions are usually of the least importance factors are present thus it is preferable to confound this variability with the higher interaction. Use Examples In the statistical theory of the design of experiments, blocking is the arranging of experimental units in groups that are similar to one another. Typically, a blocking factor is a source of variability that is not of primary interest to the experimenter. An example of a blocking factor might be the sex of a patient, by blocking on sex, this source of variability is controlled for, thus leading to greater accuracy. For randomized block designs, there is one factor or variable that is of primary interest. However, there are also several other nuisance factors. Nuisance factors are those that may affect the measured result, but are not of primary interest. For example, in applying a treatment, nuisance factors might be the specific operator who prepared the treatment, the time of day the experiment was run, and the room temperature. All experiments have nuisance factors. The experimenter will typically need to spend some time deciding which nuisance factors are important enough to keep track of or control, if possible, during the experiment. When we can control nuisance factors, an important technique known as blocking can be used to reduce or eliminate the contribution to experimental error contributed by nuisance factors. The basic concept is to create homogeneous blocks in which the nuisance factors are held constant and the factor of interest is allowed to vary. Within blocks, it is possible to assess the effect of different levels of the factor of interest without having to worry about variations due to changes of the block factors, which are accounted for in the analysis. A nuisance factor is used as a blocking factor if every level of the primary factor occurs the same number of times with each level of the nuisance factor. The analysis of the experiment will focus on the effect of varying levels of the primary factor within each block of the experiment. Randomized block design The general rule is Blocking is used to remove the effects of a few of the most important nuisance variables. Randomization is then used to reduce the contaminating effects of the remaining nuisance variables. For important nuisance variables, blocking will yield higher significance in the variables of interest than randomizing. Blocking to remove the effect of nuisance factors one useful way to look at a randomized block experiment is to consider it as a collection of completely randomized experiments, each run within one of the blocks of the total experiment. With Suppose engineers at a semiconductor manufacturing facility want to test whether different wafer implant material dosages have a significant effect on resistivity measurements after a diffusion process taking place in a furnace. They have four different dosages they want to try and enough experimental wafers from the same lot to run three wafers at each of the dosages. Blocking used for nuisance factors that can be controlled. The nuisance factor they are concerned with is furnace run since it is known that each furnace run differs from the last and impacts many process parameters. Definition of blocking factors An ideal way to run this experiment would be to run all the 4x3 equals 12 wafers in the same furnace run. That would eliminate the nuisance furnace factor completely. However, Regular production wafers have furnace priority, 
and only a few experimental wafers are allowed into any furnace run at the same time. Block a few of the most important nuisance factors. A non-blocked way to run this experiment would be to run each of the 12 experimental wafers, in random order, one per furnace run. That would increase the experimental error of each resistivity measurement by the run-to-run -run furnace variability and make it more difficult to study the effects of the different dosages. The blocked way to run this experiment, assuming you can convince manufacturing to let you put four experimental wafers in a furnace run, would be to put four wafers with different dosages in each of three furnace runs. The only randomization would be choosing which of the three wafers with dosage 1 would go into furnace run 1, and similarly for the wafers with dosages 2, 3, and 4. Let X1 be dosage level and X2 be the blocking factor furnace run. Then the experiment can be described as follows. Table of randomized block designs Before randomization the design trials look like. An alternate way of summarizing the design trials would be to use a 4x3 matrix whose four rows are the levels of the treatment x1 and whose columns are the three levels of the blocking variable x2. The cells in the matrix have indices that match the x1, x2 combinations above. By extension, Note that the trials for any k-factor randomized block design are simply the cell indices of a k-dimensional matrix. The model for a randomized block design with one nuisance variable is where Example of a randomized block design The theoretical basis of blocking is the following mathematical result. Given random variables, x and y. Description of the experiment. The difference between the treatment and the control can thus be given minimum variance by maximizing the covariance between x and y. This article incorporates public domain material from the National Institute of Standards and Technology website http www.nist.gov Matrix representation Model for a randomized block design Estimates for a randomized block design Generalizations of randomized block designs Theoretical basis Bibliography